What's up, guys? Today, let me turn that down. Today, we're talking about Beyblade X and some of the negativity that I've been seeing going around. There's a lot of a lot to unpack. Um, I'm also going to be talking about Beyblades or Takara Tomy's push for Beyblade X, Beyblade as a whole, to be looked at more like a sport sort of comparable to like an eSport and why that I think that that's important for Beyblade in the future and as a whole and why I think it's a good thing. I've seen a couple people with um, the opinion that that push to make Beyblade more competitive is a bad thing especially for kids because there is you know obviously with competition comes people who are aggressively competitive, you know, people who really don't like to lose, people who are, like, going to try to rule shark or going to try to cheat. Um, but I think <coughs> a lot of that is coming from um, WBO events or certain areas um, in the country that are hosted by the WBO. And not every area is the same. So some areas, maybe you've got a group of players that are um, a little more unforgiving when it comes to kids trying to participate or um, a little less flexible. Now, I'm not saying that, that people should let kids win because I don't. I don't think that we should be letting kids win in a competitive environment. I think that uh, you know, if kids want to play casually, let them play casually. If kids want to compete, then, you know, they compete at the same level. It's the same, same thing that applies to trading card games like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! or video games like Fortnite or Rocket League or, like, any of the popular competitive things that kids play. The same thing applies. You can't go to a, a Pokemon trading card tournament and, you know... People, the, the same rules don't apply to you because you're 8 or if you're 25. You know, it's the same thing. And I think that's good. I think that's good for competitive, to hold everybody to the same standard. And I don't think that Beyblade is um, something that everybody can't play on the same level. When I went to Beyblade West Coast this past week, um, there was a young kid. He's probably, I don't know, 12 or something. And he he beat most of the adults there. Like he swept just about everybody at the tournament and you know, we were just hyping him up. So it's not like Beyblade, like if you're physically stronger that you're going to have a major advantage in Beyblade, you know, you're still stuck to the amount of gears that are in a ripcord or, you know, in a string launcher or whatever, the gear ratio, like you're limited to that. doesn't matter how, how hard you pull it. It's only going to go so fast. Um, and a lot of times, like if you pull it too hard, you're, it's going to be detrimental to, to, you know, your, your, um, launch anyway. You run the risk of self KOing and things like that. So I don't really think that's an issue. I mean, well, I do think there's toxic people in the Beyblade community. I think there's people who are just generally negative, um, people who take the competition maybe a little too seriously to the point where, you know, they're, they're just putting off bad vibes. They're way too hyper fixated on winning. You know, it, Ultimately, it should be a game that you enjoy, even if it's competitive. You know, and that applies to any any competitive game. Like if you're if you're playing it to a point where you're taking it so seriously that you're not having fun anymore, then you shouldn't play it. You know, if if you're screaming at your TV playing Fortnite, you should maybe play a different game. <laughs> it's probably causing you a little too much stress. You know, <coughs> it doesn't sound like an enjoyable experience at that point. You know, you're just raging. That's when you turn off the game, you walk away, and you do something else. Um, same thing applies to Beyblade. But the reason why I think it's important that Takara Tomy is pushing for it to be more competitive is because it's it's built for that. It is a competitive hobby, and it really lends itself well to being something that could be taken more seriously. If you look at games like um, chess or games like, um, you know, kind of kind of less physically demanding sports, like ping pong or pool, um, sort of like strategic games that still have a physical element to them. I think Beyblade sort of compares to that. 
And um, the reason why I think it's a good thing is it brings in a larger audience. You know, the reason why Fortnite is so popular is because all of these young kids watch Booga and Clicks and uh, Ninja and like all of these, well Ninja maybe not so much, but all of these higher tier players that are very good at the game and it makes them want to be good. That's, you know, they'll, they'll buy their keyboards, they'll buy their jerseys, or they're the same mice that they use, or whatever. They use the same skins because they want to be like these characters or, um, or these players, and they want to get to that same level. And even if they suck, even if they're bad, even if they can't, you know, get to Champions Division or whatever, they can't place in a cash cup, that's still the, like, that's still one of the reasons why they play is because they aspire to that. And so creating a competitive environment that sets the tier for that a little higher brings in not only younger kids that are looking at it from a more competitive level, because right now, the main marketing for kids is the anime. And that's great. It sells the toys. But how do you keep the kids invested in playing with the toys? They're fun, sure. But if kids aren't looking at it from a competitive aspect and they don't understand the way the different parts interact and work together, and sort of how everything balances out game-wise, then eventually it sort of tapers off and they lose interest and they get involved in something else. But if there's something for them to work towards and competition and like players that they want to beat or ranks they want to get to or an event coming up that they want to win because of a prize or whatever or the chance to win a certain prize, that pushes interest and the longevity of that interest stays. It's, it gives it staying power. And beyond just kids, Takara Tomi recently talked about how um, they discovered that a large or a good chunk of their audience is adults, 20 to 30 percent of players um, and people investing in Beyblade Burst by the end of the series um, were adults, 20 to 30 percent. That's a, that's a huge number. It doesn't sound like a lot, but... Um, adults have a much larger buying power than children, so there's a large untapped market for Takara Tomi to make more money, and obviously they want to make more money, they're, they're selling a product. So how do they cater towards the adult population as well as the kids? Well, you create a more competitive environment because the adults want to participate too. Ever since, you know, back in 1999, we have reports of parents flying their kids all over the country to participate in tournaments. They couldn't participate themselves, so they would help them build combos, like use this combo at the tournament to vicariously be able to participate. And so this is a way to open it up to the adults that have been fans of the series for a long time and to get new adults interested in the series as well by creating a competitive environment for them to be involved with as well, which opens up a large chunk of untapped revenue for Takara. And so I think... Um, that's what we're seeing with the difference in um, sort of the art direction, the graphic design is like very much more sleek, much more mature looking over like Burst or Metal Fight or even like Bakuten Shoot. Like everything's very sleek looking now, all of the logos and the text, the fonts and everything, very sleek looking, very clean looking, less bubbly and kiddy. The art, they obviously have brought in an artist that has worked on Promise Neverland's much sort of older audience shonen manga art style. Um, same thing with the writer. More, these are artists and writers that are coming from a background of more serious um, stories and plots. And I, I think that's intentional. I don't think they're going to isolate the kids where it's not also targeted towards them, but I think we're going to see them bump it up just a little bit to where the anime is also interesting to adults. Like, an adult can watch it um, in the same way that, like, My Hero or, you know, other shonen mod, Dragon Ball or whatever, that can appeal to both kids and adults, right? We're going to step it up a little bit from just a kid's product placement anime to something with a little bit more substance plot-wise and maybe action-wise to try to appeal to a broader audience. I really think that that's what they're trying to do, and I think that's great for Beyblade as a whole because it creates a larger audience of people. That means more players. The more players there are, the more products we get, the longer it goes on, the longer we have Beyblade, more generations, and the more that they can invest in tournaments. Japan obviously has lots of tournaments. They have, you know, 
forever. They have had G4, G3, all the way up. Tons of tournaments, tournaments at convenience stores and like little mom and pop shops and stuff, all the way up to, you know, world championships. And outside of Japan, this not really been a thing. We've had a couple world championships, but like the qualifiers have been very specific states, very kind of out of the way, not really accessible and definitely not common. You know, you have the occasional Hasbro tournaments at like retail stores and stuff, but that's it. There's not been any organized play really outside of Japan, and I think that hopefully we're going to see them push that a little bit more here as well. And uh, I think it's a great thing. A lot of people are complaining that the system is not going to lend itself well to competition because of the stadium, right? Because of the gimmick, this ridge right here. They're saying that this is going to destroy competitive. I don't think that's the case. I think we've gotten a very standardized stadium for 20 years. It's been a circle with a ridge and some exits, and that's been it. You know, we've had some gimmick stadiums or whatever, but for the most part, most competition has been in a very standardized sort of BB-10-esque or burst standard or, um, you know, a TA or whatever. It, the stadiums have been very, very similar. Takar Tomy has never pushed really a mainline gimmick stadium outside of Zero-G, which was an instant flop. Um, Zero-G didn't, didn't perform that well. But this is... Obviously a gimmick stadium, but not so far gone that it's zero G where the stadium's just all over the place. This is this is gonna be more predictable than I think you guys are giving it credit for. Yes, it has these strips. Yes, the tornado ridge tapers off up here. I don't think this is gonna ruin competitive. I think this is gonna change how you have to play. It's gonna change how you have to think about it. A lot of people are saying you're just gonna launch hard and that's it. It's just gonna be brain dead. I don't think that's going to be the case. There's just going to be, you're going to have to change how you play and how you launch and reformulate it. Like if, let's say you're both using attack types, right? One person is on the right side, one person's on the left side, you know, and you know, first round they just hard launch, right? So they just go straight down and around, straight down and around, and they just stick into a loop. Let's say you're on the left side. Let's say you just stall, right? So you launch at a bit of an angle, you back launch, it's gonna launch back here. He's gonna launch right here. He's already gonna come down here and around. You're gonna pass right through him, come back around, and eventually, hopefully, I mean, depending on the timing and stuff, you're gonna catch up and you're gonna be the one to knock him out. There's gonna be strategy to it. It's just gonna be different than what you're used to. And it's just gonna be, it's it's a large change. It's a large, you know, divergent from the sort of, like I said, the standard sort of stadium and gameplay that we're used to. But I don't think there's not going to be any um, competitive options. I don't think it's going to be a brain dead, just launch hard and, you know, whatever happens, happens. I think there's going to be as much strategy as there's ever been. Um, we're just going to have to change the way we think about how we launch given the stadium and the, the differences. I think there's going to be, you know, people are going to figure out new ways to make the Beyblade perform how they want it to. It's all physics, you know, and ultimately there's going to be some level of predictability to it as long as you pay attention to what you're doing and how the Beyblades respond in the stadium. So obviously we don't have these in hand, but I don't think that this stadium or this gimmick is going to kill competitive. I think it's just not what people want. People want to go back to a very standardized play. Now, I like Metal Fight competitively, and I think that's what a lot of people were wanting, is sort of a return to Roots, sort of um, very solid competitive gameplay. And this is obviously not that. This is very different. Um, but I think that, like, if, if we give it a chance, you know, get it in hand, play around with it, I think there's... I think there's going to be more competitive viability than people are thinking. I, you know, everybody's saying, you know, they're pushing this competitive thing, but they're giving us this gimmicky stadium. How does that make any sense? I, I, like I said, I think it's just one of those things we're going to have to get in hand. We're going to have to relearn, you know. I, and it's it's like the difference between riding a skateboard and riding one of those like twisty things. What the heck are those called? I don't know. Like, the way that you ride it's going to be different. Or the difference between riding uh, roller skates and roller blades. It's a different experience. Or uh, ice skates and roller blades, you know? They're similar, but it's not the same thing. It's, it's, um, 
there's enough enough similarity that it feels kind of similar um like gameplay wise but it's different enough that you have to relearn some things and i think we just have to give it the benefit of the doubt that there's going to be options here and obviously a lot of people are you know people that don't like the aesthetic that's just there's nothing you can do with that you know if you don't like the aesthetic you don't like the aesthetic people didn't like burst aesthetic people don't like metal fight aesthetic people don't like plastic gen aesthetic that's just that just comes down to personal preference if you don't like the way they look that's that's just is what it is um as far as the gimmicks go obviously this is really early on we only have four releases um slated right now we have uh the rare baguette that we've seen the cobalt or whatever we don't even know what the tip is or the like the chassis piece or whatever so um we're not sure what those parts are or any of the future releases but everybody is i feel like being extremely critical given that all we have is a stadium and four beyblades um that we really have any footage for so far so i think we just need to pace ourselves and slow it down and try to be a little more optimistic about um the Beyblades and the direction that Takara Tomi is is taking. Obviously, they've been working on this for years. Um, they, I think they said the the copyrights or something were from 2019, 2020. So it's been like several, you know, three three years, four years or whatever that they've been working on this, um, at least. So I don't think that they would invest this time and the money. And this is, I I think. This is probably the most that they've invested into a launch um, from any of this series. I, they've, it, there's a lot of money going into this launch, um, pretty clearly by some of the adverts um, and the uh, the events that they've, they've they've already started rolling out. Um, you know, they're they're pumping a lot into this, and I think they've got a lot of plans. And I think that the future of the franchise is. Um, looking pretty promising. I think the system looks pretty interesting. We're not even really 100% sure how all of the gimmicks are going to work yet and like what they're going to be able to do with this system. There's there's so much going on that we are, don't even fully understand yet as far as how the parts go together and what the burst resistance actually looks like and how the interchangeability of the parts is going to make certain things viable or unviable or whatever. There's going to be a lot of testing and stuff. A lot of, of just a big learning curve. I'm looking forward to that because it's different. It's very different. You know, I I liked Burst when it first came out, but the main issue with Burst was that the teeth were bad. They were really bad. They were so bad that it made the game not very fun for like the first year because like a lot of the Beyblades that you would buy, you would get, and the teeth were so bad, it was just, they were unusable. You'd launch it, and they would instantly burst. And then, so you're spending all of your time putting it back together, you launch it insta-burst. And that part wasn't very fun. The, the single and dual layers, a lot of them, didn't really become usable until we got um, dash drivers for, for classic format. Um, and these look like there's been a lot more thought going into retaining that burst mechanic without it um, destroying the competitive viability of parts. So it looks like they've really changed the system up and they've thought about how like the tips affect burst resistance. So that's, that's one of the main things is those tips are going to affect burst resistance. So like stamina tips and defensive tips are going to have different burst resistances than attack types. And that's intentional versus, you know, you, they create a layer and some of the teeth just suck. Um, and there doesn't seem, seem to be any rhyme or reason behind it. You know, something looks like it would be really cool and really useful, but the teeth are awful. So you just, you just can't use it. Um, even, you know, with the later dash drivers, you know, some stuff still wasn't usable or it was barely usable. It was very high risk. Um, and this just looks way more balanced to me. So that's, that's really all of my, all of my thoughts. I just wanted to throw it out there because I, you know, over the past week, I've seen a lot of positivity, but then I've seen this trend of like a lot of negativity right now. So I would say just, um, you know, let's, let's see how it plays out before we, um, start throwing it all in the trash or writing it off. So I think there's a there's a lot of potential here.
and uh, I think it's going to be fun to, to learn the new system and learn how to play in the new stadium um, despite the gimmick that they've introduced. So that's it. Let me know what you think down in the comments, guys. Um, look forward to uh, learning more about Burst stuff as it comes out. Really looking forward to getting the products in hand. <coughs> Let me know down in the comments if you guys are ordering it, if you've already ordered it, what you're ordering, what your plans are. Um, really interested. I've ordered everything. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully the next month or so passes by pretty quick. So I will uh, see you guys in the next one. I appreciate you watching.